Hello fellow modelers and styling fanatics, welcome back to my channel. I hope that everyone is doing fine and enjoys the hobby. Concrete Banker is back again today with another one of his notorious episodes. So, on today's episode, me and Pat George are doing some extra work and putting some extra effort and we finally complete our uh, in-between project which is none other than the Beijing BJ212 Chinese military jeep from Trumpeter in 1 to 36 scale and kit number 02302 if I remember correctly so as I've said uh, we have taken the extra mile me and past George and we have completed this build we have rifled through it and uh, to be honest with you guys we have taken the um, uh, the decision to leave it in pristine condition, no, you know, uh, not to weather it at all, uh, mainly because I didn't feel like I wanted to weather this figure, you know, uh, it, it didn't, it, it didn't inspire me to do it, not that, uh, it, that, that it is something wrong with it, I just didn't feel like it, you know. Be on, to, to, to be honest with you guys, not everything has to be weathered. Just for once from this channel, let's have something in pristine condition. You know, just for a change of pace. Anyway, uh, build uh, processed uh, relatively good. Okay, I had some hiccups here and there, you will see uh, in the course of the video but I am really happy with it and I did have a blast of course and I share my full opinion for the kit in the end of this video for whoever reaches there because as always this is going to be a long one and um, yeah nothing else for me to note so you guys all know the drill grab yourselves a seat make yourselves comfortable or and crack the mandatory cold one or a hot brew depends where you are in the world and what time it is right now and let's see what me and past George have in stock for you in this episode welcome back guys welcome back to the porcupine land um, I am about to start part number 5 of our uh, Chinese military jeep the Beijing BJ212 I haven't yet decided what I wanna do, if I wanna weather it or not, you know, if I wanna add mud and dust or not. Only two of you <laughs> answered my questions, and even you are, uh, and e even, that even those two votes didn't help me, because one guy said, you can do whenever you want, you can do dusty or not, and the other guy said, you can keep it in pristine condition. Uh, anyway, uh, I am gonna still uh, think about it. I have time. Uh, the parts are once again onto my porcupine because I am going to uh, trans transport them to my paint uh, station and give them a coat of matte varnish. I, as always, I am gonna use the Galleria matte varnishes, the Winsor and Neutral one, the acrylic, this one, because this is the one that I am familiar, and this is the one that friends, uh, you know, um, told me to use. This bulletproof and etc. etc. User friendly, user friendly, etc. etc. And I trust them and. This is my choice. So, um, I haven't done anything except of preparing the parts, and uh, the ah, and I have done some slight work on the exhaust system. I'm gonna talk about it later. I am going to coat everything except three pieces. Let's move this aside. And I am going to show you those three pieces. So, one is the internal rate, um, heat, uh, heat mechanism, you know, the, uh, 
the warming, the thing that you open when you want to warm yourself in a car and not the air conditioning unit, the other, the old school one, the heater mechanism, this one won't be visible, so no need for me to coat it with matte varnish, this will go at, over there, and the seats, now, I want to keep the seats shiny because I like them how they are and I think that they they sell you the they sell you nicely the the fact that they are leather you know a well worn leather quote unquote you know when when leather is old it becomes shiny and stuff like that so these ones need to be coated with matte varnish as well and now let's move on to the other thing that I have told you. The only work that I have done is over here at the exhaust system. Uh, let's hope my camera can get it. As you can see, I have um, uh, give it some slight chipping with dark rust, and I have diluted um, light rust, heavily diluted it in a wash consistency, and gave it a couple of coats just to give it this uh, rusty quote-unquote once again tint and this is how it looks right now of course and I am waiting for the the, the second uh, coat of uh, my light rust wash to completely dry and it will be ideal, you know, it will be a well used uh, exhaust. That's my intention, that's how I am going to name it. Now, uh, let me coat the, everything, and this one as well, in matte varnish, and I am going to be back. Well guys, matte varnish application mission has finished and it is time for us to start assemble some stuff it is time for us to uh, eliminate our porcupine um, I won't show you the parts uh, in the majority of them being uh, matte varnished you are going to see them slowly as I will uh, assemble the whole thing there is no need for me to do that and let's start exactly where we left of uh, and I mean the instructions section so up until for the guys that uh, watched my previous episodes up until step number four everything is finished so we're gonna move to step number five and and it is time for us to attach the radiator the engine and um, this small axle to our chassis the only thing that I have done uh, off camera, of course, uh, other than the dark, uh, the the matte varnish, varnish, sorry, was to attach the um, ah, other tires onto the wheels, mainly because it is boring stuff and you won't need me to see. So, over here at the back we have a free spinning wheels. Over here at the front they are spinning, but they are kind of hitting this thing which is the uh, not the steering wheel rack I cannot remember their name right now but this thing that I wrongly placed probably that's our first issue from the part I wrongly placed I misplaced so anyway let's grab our super view if I can find it yeah here we have it, let's grab our <coughs> sacrificial jar and start attaching pieces ok, a small dab of super glue will be enough and I am working with super glue mainly because not mainly because because parts are you know uh, painted and regular Tamiya thin or Revel Contacta won't uh, work ok let's grab an applicator yep and let's start we're gonna start with the easy part first 
it's the end scene here is how it looks and we're gonna apply glue to around these two knobs we're gonna leave this aside and we are going to apply glue over here at this hole and that hole as well and it is time for us to drop the engine in place for the first time wow I feel like a car channel right now <laughs> drop the engine in place it is time for the engine to find its way home to its permanent residence come on I have shaky hands come on darling will you do me the favor? no I think I know what the problem is I must have flooded the thing with uh, paint and varnishes and all that stuff and I have forgotten to reopen the holes give me a moment to grab a file and take care of that matter should be good. Let's reapply glue. Second time is the charm. Probably. You never know how many attempts. Try that again. Uh, yeah, oh. whatever reason I cannot properly line it up let me bring it closer to my eyes one eternity later and there we have it the engine looks to be in place okay now we have to attach the radiator so the radiator has a locator pin over here and the location hole the hole where it's supposed to be dropped is over here let's hope that this time this won't fight me back this part won't fight me back and let's see Yep, that's in place as well. Okay, now we're starting to take shape, and now we have to attach this small axle. Oh, 
over here this gap oh this is going to be tricky I'm gonna need to concentrate wish me luck guys and yes everything is in place so upon step number five completion we should be looking at something like this let's move this aside Let's get about our instructions and see what awaits us. So on step number 6 we have the tires that I have already attached and the exhaust system attachment. I will leave this one to, uh, I will leave this one uh, aside for a little bit for the glue to cure and I am going to be back for the exhaust uh, system attachment ready for step number six and here is how my exhaust looks right now it is totally uh, and completely dry matte coated as well and here is the um, uh, the slight rust effects in uh, in their full potential there's the slight rust effects that i have chosen in their full poten potential uh, that's what i uh, wanted to say now I have found a small mistake uh, that if I could have test fitted this thing before I may have been able to fix it but right now I won't go back and that mistake is this hole over here, this gap. This will need to be placed like so. You will need to feed the exhaust uh, pipe. In between this small triangular gap over there like so and this will need to rest on top of the, this chassis rail this one now the problem is that if you flip the thing you can see the gap damn <laughs> that's crappy <laughs> kinda crappy and that uh, pisses me off to be honest with you guys Anyway, it is what it is right now. Things have happened. Anyway, we will and we will leave it as it is. I'm not going back. I'm not gonna uh, fill it with uh, with putty and uh, do all that uh, work again. You know, paint it, repaint it, and stuff like that next time I will be more careful that's a smile to be honest with you that's a minor mistake both from me and uh, and from uh, trumpeter but that's nothing in comparison with something worse when so glue application and wish me luck let's see if i can do it again feed it through there drop it in place drop this one over there and let's line this up yeah come on i know i know you want it i'm uh, Okay. Now I should probably cut the exhaust pipe over there because we have some excess. Let me see if I can do that surgery. And of course I have moved the engine. Okay. 
I'll fix that. But now the exhaust pipe is in place. We are not gonna have leaks. Exhaust fumes are nasty. Believe me, I know. <laughs> okay. Step number six complete, and that's what you are supposed to be looking at. And that's a look from the underside. Let's move this aside, zoom out a bit. A bit, I said. And let's see what awaits us. So, step number six is done. Let's move to step number seven. Oh! Oh dear! Okay. Upon step number seven... Nah, I will leave the clear parts until the very last moment. So, step number seven. We'll have to wait. Step number eight... I have to attach the... Um, oh, the windshield will have to wait. Step number 9. We have the attachment of the dashboard and the, the heater mechanism. Let's do that. Let's wait for this to dry. No, let me prepare the parts, sorry, and I am going to be back. Boy, oh boy, let's start with the dashboard. Attachment, of course, and we have to attach the heater mechanism first. And this dude fought me valiantly while I was test fitting the thing. I couldn't even attach it off camera, so don't expect much. That's I the only way I have found to work was to drop it and slide it to place things are cramped inside there not like so come on no Oh no! I've told you so. This thing can put a fight. This part will test my patience, and I'm not famous for having one. I'm not famous for being a patient guy. Will you stay in place or will I fill the curse jar? Ye oh no, oh no, no, no. Come on. I will probably feel the curse jar. The curse bar. There, there, there. Is it there yet? Don't move a muscle. Ooh. Okay. Now we have to attach the dashboard. 
and the dashboard needs to be dropped on top of it and yeah, as you can see over here probably don't know over here exactly where the point of my tweezers are there is a square indentation and there is another one from the other side on the exact opposite uh, direction and this is where the dashboard needs to drop itself wish me luck with that guys I have to be extra extra careful now I don't wanna knock that heater mechanism off because it was a B you know the rest of it to attach ok here goes nothing I'll grab it from the grab handle Will you? Will you? No, of course not. Of course not. Why? Why should it fall in place? Why should this thing cooperate? Hmm? Give it a good reason. I don't have one. Okay, okay. Looks like we have a small problem. Hmm. Or, no, or not. Okay, I think that I have found the problem. This one is misplaced. Okay, I dropped the thing lower. And looks like it will work right now. Then no, I haven't test fitted the, the dashboard yet. I will in a while. All this work and preparation, and still this thing won't, and still this thing fights me back. Okay. That's on me though. There we have it. Mm, or not. <sighs> oh god. Let's try that again. I am kind of pissed off right now. this won't win I will prevail at the end and I prevailed boom no 
know some of you may say that if I have if I had the dashboard attached before you know before I paint it it would be better but no <laughs> it would be easier but I wouldn't be able to do all that detailed painting uh, that I have uh, already done and now guys we are not taking the easy route here okay there we have it exactly where it's where it is supposed to be now we have to attach another two pieces the two um, um, fuel tanks I'm gonna call them but they go over here and here this one is a part of step number 10 so I have them around so why not why not do that we have B and we have a C sorry hmm. let's hope that this will be easier and let's go B is supposed to be dropped over here Exactly. That went smoothly. And C is supposed to be dropped in the opposite direction. Let's hope that this will go smoothly as well. that done we have finished step number nine and step number ten as well what's left to do mm -hmm. seat attachments Ooh. okay so I did a thing and uh, did some minor work <laughs> of camera to be honest with you guys here it is what I have done I have attached the steering wheel it is such a pain in the back to get it in place, so I opted to um, to do it off camera because you you have seen enough struggle today, <laughs> probably, and you will see more. To be honest, let's not lie to ourselves. So, uh, step I am currently going to do step twelve, which is the attachment of the front seat and step 13 which is the attachment of the rear uh, passenger seats but let's start from step 12 first now there should be some posts over here but as i've said in my previous episodes i have lost them because i don't know <laughs> things happened so this won't be uh, idea, you know, the placement won't be ideal. Now, I have four attachment points one to the pillar over here, two to the other pillar, and two to the central uh, console over here. And those I am going to take advantage of. Let's see if this will help me. I have already glued my sacrificial jar. Ok. 
Okay. Ooh. Things are tricky. Damn, I started this build with so much potential and I feel that I am disappointing you guys. But... Nothing else I can do right now. Yeah, what is done is done. So, front uh, driver's uh, seat and passenger seat are in place and let's move to the rear. On to the rear things are easier. We only have two connection points, these two. And... Oh, come on. Boom. That went smoothly. Okay. And I think with all that done, our work onto the interior of our vehicle is done. Now, let's zoom out a bit, let's leave this aside to dry. We are going to move on to step four, number 14, where we have the lower part of the doors to attach. Hmm, let's see. Is it now a good time to do this? Yeah, why not? One, two, three. Oh, no, no, no. Come on. Feisty one, four. Okay. So let's first find the proper orientation. Is, are they the same? Yeah, they are the same. Okay. More glue. Things are explanatory here. I cannot. I don't need to tell you where to, where and why. You need to place them like this. Let's hope for the best. Drivers. Door first. Place. Okay. Ooh, smoothly. Like a glove. The rear passenger one. Let's do one side at a time. Come on. Oh, yes, like a glove once again. That's what I am talking about. And let's move from the passenger side. God, I hate super glue, but I have no other option. Oh, there, lovely. Last one to go. We are seeing the end of the tunnel, guys. Isn't it great? 
when you know all when you can see a build taking its final shape after all this work you have done you know seeing it uh, taking shape seeing it uh, becoming alive just right in front of your eyes okay this is the greatest part the greatest part of any build if you ask me so if you follow closely my build this is what you are supposed to be looking at upon the completion of step number 14 now let's move this aside once again I know I've said that before and let's see so we have step number 15 we have to attach the canvas top but we won't do that yet because we need to attach the windshield and we also need to attach the rear windshield on the canvas top yeah that's another thing and then we have the upper part of the canvas uh, doors the upper part of the canvas doors sorry the upper part of the doors which is canvas together with the window assembly and then okay looks like we have reached the detailing stage which means that I would need to prepare everything like here all the holes and parts for the lights I will need to start attaching clear parts um, most of them I will attach them off camera because mainly A I will need to paint clear parts like indicators and headlights when I need to paint I mean to paint the, the rubber part that uh, surrounds the edge of its light of its clear part uh, I will need to do that off camera and it will take me some time uh, anyway let me do that and uh, I am going to be back okay guys I am in the stage of working with the clear parts and in between uh, my work and attaching clean and attaching clear parts I thought that uh, it would be useful for some of you to share some stuff about clear parts um, the only thing I am going to share for the time being is two, two, two things uh, first of all when you work with clear parts make sure that you work with glue that it is uh, specifically intended for clear parts don't use uh, Tamiya Extra Thin or any other uh, type of glue mainly because you're gonna fog the part you know the heat that uh, Tamiya Extra Thin uh, produces in order to melt and fuse plastic together uh, creates fog in the clear part most of you guys are familiar with it so the either you buy a specific part a, a specific glue for clear parts or you go like me with PVA PVA glue is good mainly because it is cheap it dries clear and it doesn't fog the piece the only downside that PVA has it is that is that it um, does not create a strong bo bond um, th this doesn't mean that it won't hold the part it will hold the part nicely but it uh, the bond won't be as strong uh, as any other uh, glue uh, created specific for this purpose now another example I want to give you is this one here at the right as you can see we have uh, I have one of the clear parts that I gave it my quote unquote treatment this treatment is not mine I have seen several car guys do that stuff and um, this is why I like to build uh, uh, you know several topics not only tanks and uh, and figures I like to build cars I like to build motorcycles uh, aircrafts whatever mainly because you pick uh, you pick useful tricks from other genres of modeling this trick I have picked up from the car community now you have a clear part like this 
if you go and install it it would look totally fake um, because you know after all you want to imitate a glass and what what is surrounding a glass when you have when you place it on a car or whenever the glass the glass is surrounded by some sort of rubber for various purposes now how can we replicate that uh, rubber surrounding the glass really easy with the use of a sharpie of a permanent marker so what do you do look look the difference between those two pieces now i am going to transform this one onto that one and give it you know that uh, glass look you know that windshield side uh, thing view uh, look sorry so you grab your part you grab your sharpie and paint over here only at the edges this is another sharpie you can use uh, the, this trick with the sharpie you can use it in windshields as well if you don't have a steady hand you know with a paintbrush or you cannot you know uh, you're not so good at masking with an airbrush you can use a sharpie and boom there you have it it is ready to go instant transformation guys I don't know if you can see now this looks better to my eyes now what I am going to do time for me to attach those pieces as I've said I am going to do that on camera mainly because I can and and hell, hell yeah why not create another unnecessary long video so I have already placed PVA glue to my sacrificial jar it is good and tacky mainly because I have placed it quite a while ago about half an hour and even more 40 minutes something like that okay and I am going to attach uh, to attach to apply a small amount of glue where the clear part will be placed then as expected I am going to grab the part uh, ooh, and place it like so drop it in place give it a little bit of persuasion yeah I know I am leaving fingerprints but I whenever this thing dries I am going to wipe them off so I'm gonna leave this aside and move on to the next one same thing same procedure just a tiny smidge of PVA glue all around the window frame this should be enough this should be more than enough to be honest with you guys but you know me I have a thing with <coughs> I have a thing with glues, I tend to overdo them. <laughs> I tend to overkill it. <laughs> I don't know, I wanna be sure. Better safe than sorry. Almost clicked in place. And yeah. There we have it guys, so, 
since we are here let me show you what else I have done off camera I have placed the rear windshield over here and at the canvas top of course and I have taken care the other two pieces of the doors over here I have placed the let me see the windshield same thing same uh, same same way of applying it exactly the same steps I have also detail painted and placed the, the headlights and the indicators and the tail lights over here at the back now what's our next step our next step is the canvas application to attach the windshield wipers I'm gonna do that off camera of course uh, but I am going to return for the canvas top application all right guys looks like we are back for the final assembly wish me luck because this is the step where I am uh, the most uh, nervous anxious about me uh, mainly because the canvas cover and the doors are need they need to line up right now and they don't have as many and as good contact points as I wish personally but as I said as I've said this is a personal preference pre personal yeah preference now I am going to uh, apply glue straight to the part we are gonna start with the canvas cover this will help us to line up the uh, the rest of the parts and let's and here goes nothing should click in place should click in place don't know I'm not sure <laughs> Yeah, like that. Ooh, boom! Like a glove with the first go. Take that. <laughs> oh, I love it when a plan uh, comes to fruition like this. Okay. Uh, before I go, before I continue, sorry. I have also attached the windshield wipers over here and let's move on to the next st the next step so let's move on to the doors right now okay let me flip the page of the instructions take a good look and let's see what we have so From this side we have this one, this one should go first, and this one should go second. Okay, let's do a test fit first. Let's plan how we are going to attach them. Yeah, let's plan that. Oh, this is going to fight me. I can see, I can already tell. sure but let's hope for the best and let's start okay let me apply glue to my sacrificial jar and then to our subject Uh, 
and here goes nothing. God, no. First one down, three to go. Same principle, let's see. Okay, on to the other side now. Sorry, guys, I'm not talking a lot. May I trying? I am trying to concentrate, you know, to focus. Why? There. No, 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 no. Don't screw it up. I'll fix it later. And later is now. Okay, let's leave the lower part to set. Something is a little bit fishy here. 
I cannot yet understand. This one filled in place exactly. Why this one doesn't want to go? Problem solved, guys. I will tell you exactly what happened. Um, exactly at the back of the upper portion uh, of the upper portion of this canvas door, it was uh, excess material that I didn't realize it was excess, so I had to scrape it a little bit in order for the uh, uh, the the door to sit flat as intended. And as you can see, yep, there it is. Now, what's left for us to do? Of course, and the attachment of the chassis to the car body that's our final um, stage our that should finish that should be the end of this build now there is two over here location points that should be attached over here let me apply some glue over here as well here and here let's see yes darling Mm-hmm, okay. Okay. I'll apply glue to here. And here as well. Boom. And as you suspected guys, this is the this is the completion of our base in BJ212 Chinese military jeep from trumpeter in 1 to 35th scale and kit number 02302. A great build. I uh, I was really amazed uh, by the detail apparent to this obscure obscure uh, kit. A vehicle, milita obscure military ve vehicle. I didn't know that it existed. I had no clue at all, and I was um, pleasantly surprised to see that Trumpeter has taken a good care and has taken the extra mile to give this little zip um, the detail and attention needed. Um, a very enjoyable build. Um, but it, it is not for the faint of heart uh, what I wanna say with that I wanna say that the, I wouldn't recommend this kit to a beginner except if that beginner uh, takes him his time pays extra attention and has at least two or three kits under his belt mainly because as you can see you in order uh, to do proper work and uh, and uh, have a, a great looking kit you have to work in sub assemblies work with a plan uh, paint glue and do all that jazz the, those uh, are aspects that may worry a beginner or may con confuse him this is why i want to recommend uh, this kit to a beginner it had a few issues, uh, fitting, fit, fitment issues here and there. When I say fitment issues, 
as you could probably see in over here at oh, oh, Oh my god, as you could probably he see in this episode, you had to pay extra attention, clean, clean the parts uh, nicely, mainly because uh, if you won't clean them nicely and properly, you will have some fit issues as uh, I did, as I faced. Now, uh, I, would rec I would definitely recommend this kit to the intermediate and uh, very experienced modeler because they could work wonders with this little puppy and they could have um, a great time with it as I did you know you never expect um, uh, such, 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 such a blast from uh, from a kit that uh, no big names uh, worked on it um, the only downside I found was the the lack of decals, mainly because, you know, we have to have a license plate or we have to have some markings. That's the only downside I have found. Through my research, I have seen that you can um, build this uh, particular Jeep in many different ways in uh, many modern theaters, either as an exercise or as a conflict uh, vehicle, you know, uh, uh, give it give it a good search on Google. You will be amazed with what you will what you can find. You can also make it a rust bucket. Um, as you guys can tell, I have left it in pristine condi condition. I don't know. I didn't feel like uh, I wanted to weather this thing either way it is a modern vehicle after all and um, I don't know I did I just didn't feel uh, like I want to weather it so uh, and this is the end of this project and with all that said and done we have made it to the end of this episode on our next episode we will probably grab something new from our stars Call it a project and start uh, building it. You you guys know the drill. <clears throat> I hope that you guys found this video helpful and interesting and stick along for the next one of course. Before I go, I want to thank each and every one of you guys that watched this video. A special thank you to, my sub to all my subscribers, old and new ones. You guys are the best and you are the reason I keep doing these videos. Now, for the newcomers out there that encounter one of my videos for the first time, welcome guys, I hope that you like what I do, if so, you all know what to do. Leave a like, comment with your thoughts and opinions, share the video if you believe it deserves to be shared or even consider subscribing for more builds to come your way. Until the next time fellow modelers and friends, take care and model on. It was that Mofo Damon signing out.